everybody. I'm Kathy Hester and welcome to my kitchen. We're, and Max is, I don't know if you can hear him whining in the background. He's like, include me. And he probably will be up to nonsense. Today we have Jackie Tarleton from Plant Chicks who's going to kind of hang out with us. There is, just so you know, not going to be scrambled tofu, but we are going to talk about food and eating in general. We're also going to talk about a lovely soup that she made recently. I would love to know where you guys are from, how's the weather. It is really hot here. So I'm in Durham, North Carolina, and yeah, it's just nasty. It's going to be nasty through Saturday. And by nasty, I mean like mid to high 90s which in some parts of the country isn't unreasonable but it's june people august is when the hot weather is supposed to happen so i'm going to let jackie introduce herself to you and kind of tell you where she is she's in a mystery surprise place uh oh it froze for a minute okay. kathy thank you so much for having me here it's an honor to be here Hi everyone, my name is Jackie Tarleton. I'm co-founder of Plant Chicks, and Plant Chicks is, Marcy and I were, were the founders of Plant Chicks, and it's, we empower women to show up as the best version of themselves. We share plant-based nutrition recipes, we have workouts for you all to do, and our, like our main client are women in their 40s and beyond. So I'm really, really happy to be here. And Kathy, now I understand why I'm loving your view out of your kitchen window because you're in North Carolina and I'm, I was just telling Kathy before we came on here live, I'm actually a mom at my mom's house in Athens, Georgia. I live in Miami, Florida. And I literally live in the middle of the city, like a bunch of cars rolling by and here in right outside of Athens, it looks just like your front yard, Kathy. It's beautiful. It's green. I hear the birds. It's so peaceful. It's absolutely amazing. And I have to apologize that I'm not going to be cooking the tofu scramble, but because I love Kathy, I will send a recipe and you can send it to your followers because the tofu scramble that I make, I literally make this every week. It changes all the time, but I always use super, uh, super firm tofu greens. I put some kind of beans in there and some other veggies. I like throw everything in there. If I've got some produce that's going bad, I'll chop it up and throw it in. I always love some onions and garlic. Like I literally throw everything in there. And that's like one of my batch meals that I make. And that will be like a brunch that I have that I eat on for three or four days. So I'm super excited to be here. If you guys are watching, I'd love to hear, just like Kathy said, I'd love to hear where you're watching from. And if you have any questions about the tofu scramble that I kindly kind of just talked about, let me know. But I can also talk about this beautiful, delicious soup I made. Go ahead. Yeah, and let's go, let's talk tofu scramble because I have some feels. We all have feels about the tofu scramble, which is funny. And I also want to say hi to CJ from Scotland. It's 64 degrees there. And again, I always imagine CJ like in like, I don't know, like probably the Harry Potter common room <laughs> whenever she posts. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's cleared that up and that she's in just a regular apartment. But however, it's just like all kinds of feels come out. So I am huge on Kalanamak, our black salt. Are you pro or against? Everyone has their feelings. You know what? I've actually never cooked with it, but I really want to try because it has that eggy flavor, right? Oh my God. It is going to change your entire life. Okay. So a couple of things. Um, don't buy it at the specialty store. Like I did the first time where I spent $10 on this little bottle could go to the Indian market and it's like a dollar 50 for the same amount. Really? Even though it's called black salt, it's pink because the outside is black, but the inside is pink. We don't eat the outside after they grind it down. Um, and it seems to have, I don't know this for an absolute fact, but it seems to have less sodium than table salt because I can use like twice as much and it's not over salted to get that egg flavor. Mm -hmm. So again, 
I just make food. I'm not a food scientist, but that's from my experience, that's kind of what I've figured out. And it makes a mean tofu egg salad too. That sounds delicious. I've got to find out where a good Indian market is near me in Miami. I know that Atlanta, like over here by where my mom is, they've got to have some. So I might actually try and get some while I'm up here and I will try that. And when I do it, I'm going to tag you. I'm going to let you know how I like it. <laughs> oh, I want, I would love that. I have a friend who hates it. My best friend hates it, but she hated eggs. Yeah. Ah, so, um, yeah. and um, Ashley said she's eating tofu scramble right now for lunch, like a boss, I may add. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> Jackie said it's hot in Texas and she's jealous of CJ in Scotland. And Liz says it's hot in West Virginia and the power is out until Friday. That um, is very unfortunate. That is fair. That's hot. Hopefully you'll have some like iced tea or some iced water like drink a lot of cold liquids because when we're hot and we're sweating we need to make sure that we're rehydrating so definitely cheers to the cold water <laughs> i love cold water yeah and um liz i hope that you at least have a big cooler of ice because obviously if you don't have power because i was going to say oh i ha i've been making all these really cool treats in the my ninja creamy that I'm all excited mm -hmm. about that uh, everybody knows, but I've been making a lot of Dole Whip, Ooh. which is literally pineapple in pineapple juice, either fresh pineapple or canned, doesn't matter, and a okay. little bit of non-dairy milk. So, I mean, it, you're basically just eating pineapple. With the caveat, all of you guys having all your cold treats and, and summer drinks, if you're eating fresh pineapple, I found this out the hard way. Jackie, did you know this? Um, if it's not cooked at all, so like when canned pineapple, you don't think about it being cooked, but the, it warms it up for the canning process. Mm -hmm. It takes some of that bromelain out, which is the, out, you know, like you see pineapple in skincare for like exfoliation. Yeah. It's that chemical. Mm -hmm. So I've been making it with, um, canned and then I made it with some fresh and I ate the whole two cups because they make pints. You can only have one cup <laughs> of regular pineapple. Did and, it do anything to you? Yeah, mouth? it's it, it only lasted for maybe an hour and a half. It's I part swole here and there was another little part that swole and I was like, this does not feel good. Those enzymes are no joke. And it is interesting because when you think you have a canned food or even frozen, flash frozen veggies or fruits, they go through a processing, like a bit of processing. So you are losing some of the enzymes or some of whatever it is. That is fascinating. But the pineapple whip, I bet it's so, so good. <laughs> and you know, and doing the research for it too, cause like, I would go to Disney and I would get it because it's vegan, you know, and it's, it's awesome. So sometimes I'll eat things that maybe I wouldn't eat all the time at home. But I think I was under the misrepresentation or, or my own assumption that Dole Whip, coming from the pineapple people, was pineapple, pretty much how I'm making it. It's a dry mix with like coconut oil and a whole bunch of natural and artificial flavor even. So one of the things that I always talk about, so one of the reasons I am plant-based and I was plant forward before I was plant-based is I've got a strong history of heart disease. And my biological father last April had quadruple bypass because his heart, his arteries were all blocked. And just this year, like two months ago, my mother is having all these heart issues and it's, really scary. And I've been, I'm very fortunate that I've been able to spend a lot of time with my mother. I'm in her house now. We're packing it. She's moving closer to my sister. So she can be close to us. But like it's, it was a really good reminder of why I'm eating more plant-based. So mm -hmm. the reason I'm mentioning this is because you mentioned coconut oil and coconut oil, people are like, it's good. It's bad. It's the devil. It's amazing. Like, <laughs> where are we? And for me personally, and all of our bodies are unique. Kathy, you and I are, we're genetically, we're like 99% identical, but our gut microbiome, we're like 10 or 20% mm -hmm. identical. 
So we have such, we're so, such unique individuals. And because I have a significant history of heart disease, things that have coconut oil or coconut in it for me is not the best. And I have a history of high cholesterol too. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that when I keep the cholesterol up, because there are some plant foods that can elevate our cholesterol, right? Like the coconut oil, palm oil, palm kernel oil, some of these things. So I am now more mindful of those things in my diet only for my own heart health. Does it mean I never ever eat it? No, every once in a while I'm gonna have something that might have a little coconut oil in, but it's going to be the exception rather than the rule. So like reading the ingredients, it's so important because we think like a, a Dole Whip, like something that's pineapples, we think that it's gonna be like beautiful and healthy. But then you look at the, the nutrition label and it has all those other ingredients, including the sugars and the fats and all these added things. So I'm kind of spoiled in that like, or maybe spoiled is not the right word. I think maybe I'm more of a control freak and I like to <laughs> make things more at home versus eating out regularly. No, <laughs> and I like that. And I think that works. And um, Tiffany's here. And so she said that you're her buddy and that you totally rock and that you're the professor of the gut microbiome, which is great that you're, so this is awesome. And we're also finding out too, that like Leslie has a history of heart disease and your story sounds real similar. And her father had two triple bypasses and two an enneagrams. I have 80% plaque on the right side of my heart. And so what I find a lot in my audience is it does skew plant-based. And so for those of you who maybe aren't sure what I'm talking about, well, isn't vegan and plant-based exactly the same thing? Not exactly. You know, if you're just coming into that world from like a standard American diet, it seems very similar, but plant-based usually is doing it for health reasons. So you're paying more attention to the ingredients within those foods. So like a vegan can have Oreos because they're vegan, right? Um, a plant-based person would rather have my black bean cookies that don't have any oil in them. Those are so good. <laughs> right. And I, yeah, I've like double chocolate black bean cookies from like my second book a bazillion years ago. And so, yeah. And, and so a lot of people here, you'll also hear plant-based plant-based is used sometimes in advertising to mean vegan. In fact, yes. like beyond yeah. Beyond Meat is plant-based in that word. It is not whole food plant-based because there is coconut oil. And again, none of what I'm saying is meant to be a judgment on if you choose to eat vegan or plant-based, just merely to give you that definition so you're putting yourself in the right box. I've even heard the Beef Council say plant-based is not a vegan diet. It means putting more plants on your plate. So. I, unfortunately, plant-based is kind of becoming the new natural. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that you're right. Um, and so Kathy and I just met like right before that we've like met on social media and like we've been in different bundles together, but right before this live is the first time that we're actually talking like face to face. Mm -hmm. And so much of what you stand for, Kathy, resonates with me because you are all about inclusion and inviting more plants to your plate. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really, really important. And we need to cheer each other on wherever we are in our plant journey. And Plant Chicks mm -hmm. and Planted Forward, I do health coaching with Planted Forward. It's an integrative telemedicine practice. We've got a gastroenterologist, a cardiologist, pediatrician, dietitians. I'm a dietitian by training, but I'm doing health coaching now. But we've got a group of amazing healthcare providers and all of us at Plant Chicks and Planted Forward and you, Kathy, we're all about inclusion and helping each other get healthier by choosing to try different foods, different plants. And people think like, oh, if I go plant-based or if I, I'm going to get bored if I'm plant-based or if I'm vegan. Exactly. That thing, your face, Kathy, yeah. perfect. Because you can be like, bored and be have the standard American diet. Yes, yes, yes. And with the standard American diet, people always like boohoo or boohoo um, like a plant-based diet or a vegan diet because 
we need to take vitamin B12, typically, on average, not everyone. Well, if you look at the standard American diet, people who are eating the standard American diet are overfed but undernourished. Mm -hmm. And they need like multivitamins because they're eating so much crap. And when I say crap, I mean calorie rich and processed foods. Honestly, I think one of the most important things that you can do to start adding years to your life and life to your years is eating, like taking out the processed foods, unprocessing your foods, inviting more whole foods to your plate, mm -hmm. and just notice the energy that you feel after eating this delicious whole food plant-based meal or something that even has more plants and less processed foods on your plate. It might not be 100% whole food plant-based, but if you can unprocess those foods, I guarantee you after that one meal, seriously, that one meal, I challenge you, I double dog dare you, and you'll have more energy. You're gonna feel amazing. <laughs> it's very true and it takes very little. And I think, um, and Jackie's actually saying, I know a lot of meat eaters that are B12 deficit. And it's, yes. and it's true um, deficient. I don't know why I decided to make it a different kind of sentence. I told you there would be, <laughs> there was no right, no perfect here on my show because there is no such thing as perfect and you can't be perfectly vegan or perfectly plant-based. What you can do is do the best you can on the journey that you've picked for yourself for the reasons that you've done it. So, and I don't say you can't do something perfectly to be negative to you, but that you have to give yourself some grace. If you're vegan and you drive a car, even if you don't have leather seats, they're animal products and tires and bikes. So again, that doesn't mean you're not fighting the good fight and making the best choices you can. But I am very much, um, well, my story is there's really only three mean vegans in the world, but they make a schedule. So someone says something crappy every minute of every day. And we don't need that. That doesn't help you eat more vegetables. It doesn't help your partner or family want to eat like you. However, you give them something delicious, they'll eat it again. Yes. And so many foods, like there's so many different foods that are so, so delicious. You were talking about the black salt earlier. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I love in the tofu scramble, instead of using salt or coconut aminos, have you tried coconut aminos? I do love coconut aminos. I love coconut aminos. They have like a little sweet, salty flavor to it. And coconut aminos, have less sodium in it than like Bragg's liquid aminos, soy sauce, light soy sauce. So I'm a huge fan of not only like the lower sodium content, but the taste of coconut aminos. And it gives my uh, tofu scramble a really good flavor. And to make it like a yellow color, I use turmeric. Mm -hmm. Turmeric is really good for anti-inflammatory. I love working out. I went jogging this morning. I need to throw some turmeric on my next plate because that running it like jars me and I need some like anti-inflammatories coming into my body so I love using turmeric to make my tofu scramble yellow to look a little bit more mm -hmm. like eggs and then I put pepper on it because the pepper and also eating it with a fat that's going to help absorb the curcumin that's in that's like the good anti-inflammatory ingredient of um of turmeric so there's like all kinds of good things in there all i promise i'm going to get you the recipe and then you can share it with everyone and i'll kind of go through like some of the health benefits of all the different foods on there too oh that that would be great and um also kathy was saying she has some tofu but she's not sure what to do with it so we can also talk about some other things like i i make something called well I didn't decide what this was. I make my own version, it's probably a better way of putting this, of cruciferous crunch that you can buy at Trader Joe's, which mm -hmm. is kind of expensive because you get maybe one or two servings out of it. It's like cabbage, kale, sometimes Brussels sprouts, broccoli mm -hmm. stems, carrots. So I get out the food processor, it's worth it. I don't do, I don't, I, it take, I'm an appliance junkie, but to get my food processor out. So I'll use like red, green cabbage. I save up my broccoli stem. Sometimes if there's Brussels sprouts or cauliflower. And then I just take about four cups of that, saute it for my tofu scramble. Or 
I start a stir fry with four cups of that. Mm. And, you know, so that way you're getting a lot of um, cruciferous vegetables. They're shredded finely enough that if you have a picky eater, they can't pick it out too. Brilliant. That is a nice little tidbit of information in there. You cut it up, you chop it up finely or use your food processor and it will be disguised in there and they don't taste it as much for some reason too. Mm -hmm. My husband can be weird with onions. So I'll get out the food processor sometimes with onions and his mother actually told me, he's like, she's like, just chop everything really fine and then he won't complain about it. I'm like, he is such a little baby. It's, and he's like a six foot three dude. He's like a big dude. <laughs> oh, no, I totally get it. My wife, Cheryl, like for the longest time, people are like, how old's your daughter, Cheryl? Because she's the picky eater. And I'm like, you know, I think at that time it was like 44, you know, and you can't really make them do anything. Okay. I have to grab this real fast. I have contractors coming in and out, so I'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I'll just go to full. Oh, you're back. Okay, you're no, not no. back. I'll go to full me. And you can see my mess. Yes. I have I have another computer and all this yeah. stuff up. So if yeah, you I'm want sorry. to, um, try to think of some good things. Like, tell me what kind of tofu you have, Kathy. And that way we can kind of start from there. Like, there's nothing wrong with any kind of tofu. But you're going to treat silken tofu differently than you would maybe... Um, extra firm, firm, you might need to press, super firm, you don't need to press. Okay, I'm gonna put this back on, Jackie's back. Sorry about that, Kathy, thank you. Um, what was the question, who, who, she wants more tofu recipes. Yeah, and let's what talk about, yeah, yeah, let's talk about tofu, using it, like I just kind of went briefly through some, you know, silken tofu, you never want to press. You just kind of pour the water out. It makes great puddings. It makes things thick. Then there's soft tofu, firm tofu. I don't think I see medium anymore. There used to be medium. Then there's extra firm tofu, which is not the same thing as extra firm high protein, also sometimes known as super firm, or the thickest of the tofu that doesn't need to be pressed. Which is your favorite? So for my tofu scramble, I love the extra firm, but then for like puddings and I make this, what I'll do is I'll share in our stories in our plant chick stories, I'll share some of these recipes. So if anyone wants to go over to our Instagram at plant chicks, you guys will see that and I'll have those stories in there later today. But I make these little, it's, uh, what is it called? F or soft tofu bananas but they're ripe bananas before i freeze them so ripe bananas dates cacao powder and peanut butter or almond butter kind of I'm a huge fan of almond butter blend it all up you put it in a muffin tin or those silicone muffin things throw in the freezer for like an hour they are so good you can throw in some vegan chocolate chips if you want to you can put in some um cacao nibs super super delicious and this is something that's really good for your gut microbiome. It's absolutely amazing. So I'm a huge fan of the soft tofu, mm -hmm. but like puddings and even like any of the baked goods. Those are really good, like the black bean brownies, doing something like that with mm -hmm. adding soft tofu. But then for cooking, extra firm. So how about you? I love, I usually have a mix of extra firm and the super, because like there's... Um... The super, I like it because, like, literally, you just pour the water off, cut it up, and throw it in the air fryer. It's ready to go, no pressing. And that, so, with that said, if I'm using a scrambled tofu, if I'm making a scrambled tofu, either way, I'll grab whatever I have. I don't press my tofu to do scrambled tofu because it'll cook out. Do you do the same thing? Yeah. And a lot of people are like, how do you get it to be all crumbles? I literally, and I'm so sorry I'm not cooking today, I literally grab the extra form tofu, I take a hunk out of it with my hands and I like squeeze yeah. it and I like literally crumble it up. But people are always like, how do you do that? And if I need to make it smaller, I'll use a spatula to like cut it up more. But usually I'm able to ground it up just with my hands. It's super, super easy and it's super, super delicious. Have you done and the delicious. old, old school thing of making like ground, like ground meat with the tofu crumbles? 
No. Oh, okay, so the old, old way we wouldn't do it now. They would put caramel color in. Usually now we'll put some soy sauce in. So even if you use coconut and minos, if you could use soy, you might want to do that or maybe put a hint of molasses or mm. maybe even... Okay, you can talk for a minute. I'm going to mute myself. I can definitely talk. So I love how live, how we All are. The just like, wait, oh, I think she's not muted. But this is the beauty of being on live. Like, the life happens. Not even I'm in there. Georgia. Just the Holy Man Spirit is going to come back. But I love hearing, like, all these different ways to use tofu and different ways to cook. This is one of the reasons I love connecting with other plant-based people, including mm -hmm. all of you, and hearing some of your favorite dishes. And I'll look at some recipes, like I'll hear the one that Kathy's describing. I will try and make something very similar. I might make it my own. I might tweak things a little bit. And that's the beauty of having a recipe. It's there as like a blueprint. You don't have to follow it exactly. You customize it to how your taste buds like it. And it's a game changer. And I promise you, your family will love it too. <laughs> I totally agree. Because I think everything should be just like, a starting base. Now I have one person, um, is it Marzi? And if it's not, I'm sorry. Do you, asking about the muffin tins, do you bake those after the freezer? No, it, it's just frozen because think about it. It's just bananas, tofu, dates, and peanut butter. So it doesn't have to be baked. You just put it in the freezer and then for like an hour because they're in the, the bigger t um, muffins pull them out and you'll want them to thaw for about five minutes before you eat them. And literally I eat like three of them at a time or more. <laughs> that totally makes sense. And you could probably put it in popsicle molds too. Yes, that's brilliant. I have zombie popsicle molds and I also have tiki oh. ones. So yeah. Where did you get these? I got those at Whole Foods, but you can get them on Amazon. Um, um, I'm a big Harry Potter Halloween fan person, so I'm always got to get something a little bit quirky in there. Um, okay. Karen says she makes sour cream with silken tofu, and I do that. I make a mayonnaise with silken tofu a lot of the time. I've actually made a yogurt with silken tofu as well, and that's pretty good. Do you put a probiotic in there, or do you just try and make it taste tart? Okay. Just make a tart with some lemon. Yeah, I don't put a probiotic. I don't either. But people do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I haven't done that with, with silken tofu. I've made oat yogurt and soy yogurt and pea protein yogurt. Wow. You are good. You're like experienced. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm just, I'm a crazy mad scientist in the kitchen. So like I just made an oat cream now because I'm testing different recipes in this. And so... I already have like um, an oat date sweetened vanilla that's really good. So, mm. how so do you like to eat out very much, or do, are you mostly like like finding and playing in the kitchen? We, I think, in the past couple of years, we've eaten out more than I would have liked us to eat out. Really? What? And not going into the restaurants, but getting takeout because last year was yeah. a hard year for me personally. So I didn't mm -hmm. have a lot of energy to be cooking and things. Um, I do work on trying to have a lot of easy recipes and things like that. Um, and finally getting Cheryl into salad and soup as dinner, because that's been, you know, what? What is it now? Like 15 years coming. Wow. Yeah. You know what? It's like it takes what it takes. My husband, he's not plant-based he's plant forward for sure and he has definitely evolved over the past 15 years we've been married he's made significant changes he's super super healthy it's incredible but it's beautiful to see like they, they listen they watch they learn they taste they're like oh this is actually pretty good and you never know what's going to be that click and so Ash, I think let's see Kathy actually even has some handmade tofu homemade tofu is by what? Cleveland Tofu, because she's in Ohio, says it's high in protein and has all eight amino acids, which is awesome. And it, 
and some of it froze in her fridge and so the old way back in the day i became vegetarian in 1983. so Yay. i'm 57 well, years well. old people so i got i got so the whole TikTok washing the flour i'm like that's the old way to make seitan that i that no one ever <laughs> does but you know pandemic food's a little different um but it is very interesting. You know, you couldn't just go buy tofu no. at the store. No, it was completely different back then because I went vegetarian in 87. Okay. And it was, there was nowhere near the food innovation that we have now. And people, they didn't really know what vegan was back then. No. And I am actually really, really blessed because the dietitian that trained me, she was my mentor dietitian. She, it, this was in the early nineties. She was going to conferences with Dean Ornish, Caldwell Elsiston, um, T. Colin Campbell, like all the gurus of plant-based medicine. She's personal friends with all these guys. I remember this is like, like I said, early nineties and Dean Ornish was just starting to like talk about all his plant medicine and like eating plant-based, but Plant-based wasn't a word. It was vegan and vegetarian back then. Mm -hmm. And now 30 years later, which is crazy for me to say 30 years <laughs> later, but 30 years later, all the work that Dean Ornish has done, now they he actually has medical reimbursement where doctors get paid money for the Ornish lifestyle for cardiac rehab. This is huge, you guys, because doctors, unfortunately, love them, whatever. I love doctors. There's times where we absolutely need doctors, but we can also use food as medicine a lot mm -hmm. of times. But doctors, and they're not going to do anything unless they get reimbursed for it. And now that Ornish's program for cardiac rehabilitation is reimbursed through health insurance, that is big. It's big because it shows, the science is showing that our lifestyle matters. It's not just the food we eat, it's food we get. The sun, the sunshine, like that, it's a beautiful day, too bad it's so hot, but getting out in the sun, moving your body, and just like connecting with other people, these are the things that bring us life and that make us feel better. I totally agree. Max is like barking at imaginary deliveries because there is not a delivery out there. So I don't even know what, do you want to come say hi? Do you want to come say know. hi? Come here. Come here, little yeah. come, he, oh, come on. Oh, turn around. Show the pretty part. Show the pretty part. That's part. beautiful. Oh. Hey, Max. Look. Hello, everyone. <laughs> He's like, I protect my mommy. No one's <laughs> taking her. Uh, <laughs> But he's a sweet little nugget. He is. So now one thing I do want to go back. Okay, two things before I forget. I am middle aged and I will like go back and forth like a heart attack. Um, first thing, frozen tofu, not a bad thing. Old school way to make ground beef for vegetarians. It um, changes the texture of the tofu a little bit. So used even better, like now I've just crumbled it in, done it like a scramble. But if you do that, and you literally, you can sit the whole thing with the um, plastic in, let it thaw, squeeze it. It'll take a day or two to thaw out. Squeeze it, it's like a sponge, and then it just crumbles up. So that's good. Now the other thing, oh, here we go. CJ has us all built, beat because she went vegetarian in 1966. So take wow. that. You win the crown, and I'm jealous. Um, I know, isn't that awesome? Yes. <laughs> and before, okay, and Leslie met these gurus that you're talking about, and Kathy says, aw, Max. And Ronnie says, I used to buy tofu from big containers filled with water and tofu blocks. You can still get those in the Asian markets, too. Yeah, that's the other, we just put our hands in the container UGG and pulled it out. Yep, that's, there are so many things that happened pre-pandemic that I just cannot possibly imagine doing again. Isn't it crazy how much life has changed? 
I want my own cupcake if you're going to blow out those candles. Because mm -mm. I've always gotten a little bit OCD germaphobic during flu season. It didn't help that we were going to Disney and Universal during flu season a few years in a row, which is gross because people will sneeze on the back of your head. And yeah, so, but now I'm like, I have my sanitizers everywhere and all that. But yeah, there's so many things that we do. Um, now, the thing that I think we need to address, and I think you'll have some great ideas, is Liz, Leslie says, all this cooking sounds time consuming. So let's talk about how to make some of this easier, maybe what some of your quick go-to recipes are. So this one, Leslie, hits home for me. Marcia and I at Plant Chicks, we're all about healthy in a hurry because I do not have the time, nor does she, and it sounds like you don't either, like you don't want to be in the kitchen for hours every day. And I'm the same way. Like I will batch cook a lot of things. Um, I need to make some lentils. So I will, I use my, my Instant Pot for everything. Kathy, are you an Instant Pot person? Love my Instant Pot. Oh yeah, I have two Instant Pot books that I've published too. Oh, <laughs> I've got to close. No, literally, I'm a huge fan. I made my one, I made a big soup yesterday. Here's part of it. But literally, I'll do a bunch of batch cooking and I throw everything, like the kitchen sink, I throw everything in there, scrambled up some, didn't scramble up, I crumbled up some tofu, 13 beans, I had some greens, some frozen greens, um, I had some other frozen veggies, like mixed veggies, a couple cans of tomatoes, organic diced tomatoes, and some onions and garlic, because onions and garlic make everything taste better, and usually I use low sodium veggie broth in there, but I just filled the Instant Pot with water and it's so good. So that's super easy. That whole thing, like throwing everything in the Instant Pot, five minutes. Because if I'm not chopping anything, literally five minutes to throw everything in. 10 maybe, if I'm going back and forth to the freezer to make sure I, I wanna put other things in there. And then I put on beans and chili and it cooks for like 30 minutes. And But I'm doing other things while it's cooking. That tofu scramble, that maybe takes 15 or 20 minutes, depending on how much I'm chopping, but it doesn't take very much time at all. And I've got some other things that take even less time than that. I'm a huge fan of oatmeal. I can do like batch cook oatmeal in my Instant Pot. I can batch cook oatmeal just on the stove. And then overnight oats, super, super easy. Using a mason jar, putting in a half a cup of oatmeal. I like the steel cut oats or the old fashioned oats put in some frozen bananas or berries or whatever it is. And then I'll also put like a different kind of like turmeric sometimes in there, depends on what I want. Fill it with water or you can use a plant milk, shake it up, throw it. Oh, and also chia seeds, like three tablespoons of chia seeds. because I like it nice and thick, but you do like a whole row of those and mix up the fruits in them and you pull it out of the refrigerator the next morning. Or if you want to make them, I let them sit for at least three hours in the refrigerator and they're nice and thick and delicious. And this is something that you can take on the road. Super, super fast. Doesn't take much time at all. But I'm sure like when you're first getting into this lifestyle, just the same thing. Like if you're trying any new diet, which this is not a diet, it's a lifestyle. If you're just getting into this, it's going to take, you're going to have a little bit of a learning curve. So it might take a little bit longer at first, or if you go shopping, you can cut up everything and put it in the refrigerator so it's nice and easily accessible. So that will help decrease your cooking time. So just know when you're first starting, it might take a little extra time, but once you get your system down pat, it's, it's gonna be pretty fast. And there's just a rare occasion that I'll go like cray cray and try something that maybe takes 30 minutes to cook, but that's definitely not the norm. Like most of my stuff is literally healthy in a hurry and I just throw it in there quick and fast, easy peasy. And I think it's important too to kind of say, you know, there's nothing bad about using frozen vegetables or pre-chopped vegetables. And some people, depending on their abilities, may or may not be able to break down a butternut squash. And, right. and so 
And if you're in, again, it depends on your end goal. If your end goal is zero waste, then maybe that's harder for you. It, you know, however, you kind of have to see where your seesaw is and what works for you. I usually always have canned beans as well as dried mm -hmm. beans. So canned beans are so I can go ahead and go, you know, I need a snack. Let me make some hummus or let me go make a quick vegan tuna salad. And just to have that, um, I try to have a balance of stuff in the freezer as far as fruit and vegetables. So, and having some tofu and things. And if you're having trouble not going through things quickly enough, like you can freeze tofu, you can freeze your tempeh, you can freeze seitan if you're eating seitan. I have to eat gluten-free. So it's not because I want to. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me on that one. Now, we do have a question from Liz and Kathy seconding it. When you say vegan chocolate chips, what type do you like? I haven't found any without fake sugars. I would love to find a type that tastes good, but is sweet and naturally not stevia. And so I have two that I use. So this is not the, the dark chips. I actually bought some of the white chips. Um, so enjoy life is one that I've used and I was trying I, to look it up. It has re they have regular sugar Actually, mm -hmm. yeah, this one has cane sugar and brown rice syrup solids But it's like it has some palm kernel oil. The other is Pasha and that has organic cane sugar organic chocolate liqueur and organic um, cocoa butter oh, this, oh, no, it didn't freeze. I'm trying to use my mouse on the wrong computer <laughs> and yeah, and that's it. It just has three ingredients for the Pasha dark chocolate ones. And I have their white ones as well. I have not tried the white ones. And you guys, sugar is sugar is sugar is sugar. Even if it's organic sugar, it's still sugar. It's still going to cause inflammation. And you know why? Eating a little bit here and there is totally okay as long as it's not the norm. Um, another option are the cacao nibs. And the cacao mm -hmm. nips, these are straight up raw cacao. So it's organic raw cacao. It's not sweet at all. There's no sugar in it because it's just chocolate nibs. So it's really, they're good, but they're not that sweet that you're looking for. I don't like, I like the blue and white one, the light line. Which one? What's that one? Oh, called? enjoy life. Yeah. yeah, and that's like all that. allergen free. So what's good is if you see something enjoy life, you know at least it's always vegan. Um, and there used to be, and I just checked again too, it's only been the past few years that stopped. There used to be a grain sweetened vegan chocolate chip and I have not seen it in probably four or five years. It's not on Amazon. Um, it was probably sweetened with barley malt or something like that. If you have some sort of reactions, you can make your own chocolate chips. I do not tell you that right now or you can take an unsweetened chocolate bar and take a, a chef's knife and shave it mm. if I did that I would make sure there were little bits like the cocoa nibs maybe even smaller I might sweeten up whatever I'm putting it in a little bit extra like so maybe if you're making nice cream add an extra sweet banana or a little bit of yeah. pineapple juice you know like when I cut up a fresh pineapple I still have juice from that pineapple, right? I use a cutting board that has like a little um, gutter so I can pour it out and use it. So all of those are ways that you can sweeten it. You can always use a date too. Mm -hmm. My favorite, I love that. Those are some amazing tips. And when Kathy's talking about an extra sweet banana, you know when your bananas get those little spots on it, they get really ripe. The riper, the more spots, the sweeter they are. They're so good. Like I literally don't have that much food waste anymore because I'll freeze all the produce as soon as it's starting to go bad, just like what mm -hmm. you talked about. And it's brilliant. And talking also on your food waste, I don't know if you guys are following Carly at Plant You. She's got a whole series, Scrappy Kitchen or scra Scrappy Cooking. And she like literally has no food waste. And it's brilliant mm -hmm. to see what you're going to do with the broccoli stems and all these things that people don't necessarily want to eat. So definitely check her out. She's got some really great stuff there, but Kathy, I'm learning so much from you. And I'm so glad that you asked me to come on here. You're amazing. <laughs> and I look forward to like 
watching more of your shows and maybe I can come back and actually cook. But of no, course. like you've got some great tips. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Well, I mean, that's kind of my kind of my deal. But like I have um, two different things. I have a kale stem creamy sauce. I have another kale stem thing. I have a, ca a charred stem hummus or something yeah. like that. And you can like pickle, quick pickle charred stems and things like that. Because Cheryl won't eat in yeah, she's just getting where she eats greens now really well. So if, she, if I got to take the stems out, I take the stems out. I'm fine with that. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Gina has an amazing sweet treat idea. She loves cocoa ne uh, cacao nibs, and she likes to roll a date in them. So good. Listen, here's another little thing that you can do with your dates. If you want to put like a little scoop of peanut butter, peanut butter works actually better than almond butter in this case. But a little scoop of like organic raw like peanut butter just all natural is the word i'm looking for natural peanut butter with a little bit of the cacao nibs on them put them in the freezer freeze them not even very long 30 minutes and make a bunch of them because they will be gone in like two seconds i made them for my sister and my mom when i was here last month with them my sister and my mother were dying they're like oh my gosh these are so good so so good but freezing them game changer <laughs> see i love that and and it really is easy to do things so i want to go back to leslie for just a second too and just go you know if you're having trouble cooking a lot or it's going to get hot nobody's going to want to cook so like one of the things i'm going to do and you could do this you can make little smoothie bags put in frozen fruit, put in some chopped up kale, have it all ready to go. With the Ninja Creamy, you make the pints. And so I, because I'm working on an ebook, I've got like 15 pints in the fridge freezer right now. But you can do smoothies. So basically you put it in there. This is like the pint. It's two cups. And then I can do all of them for the week and then just spin them up. And then they're super creamy, right? So delicious. And this is... It's all the preparation. It takes a little bit of time, but then you've got everything for the week. And then when you're going to grab foods, you have all these healthy in a hurry things to grab. There's no excuses. <laughs> Absolutely. And the thing, like if you're getting fresh produce, try and break it down. Most of the time there will always be some exceptions, but you know, if your lettuce is washed and ready to go, if your kale is broken down, then you just grab a handful, you can put it in anything. Right, because you don't have to take another minute or two. I have kale broken down that we add into our romaine salads. Mm. Because why not? It's there. Right. No, you're getting in a lot of greens. I'm really proud of your wife. Like she's getting in. Like greens are so nutrient dense. So it's it's really amazing that she's getting in more greens that's like one of the best things that she can get in i'm really proud of how far she's come i made her kind of there are a couple of things i did like beginner stuff so if you're finding you're having trouble getting your family on board so like with brussels sprout brussels sprouts is a hard one and cheryl is she comes from a polish family that had first generation polish grandparents so she smelled a lot of overcooked cabbage so getting her to yeah. eat cooked cabbage is really hard and Brussels sprouts look like little cabbages. So I shred them. You can buy them shredded if you don't have time. And then I would saute them with a little bit of garlic. Um, sometimes if you want to get fancy, I'd put cabbage, red cabbage and a little bit of carrots, but some pecans and a little maple mm. syrup and some mm. liquid smoke. And not a lot of any of those. So the thing is, is like, if you're trying not to eat very much sugar, if you're eating a teaspoon or two maybe uh, there's probably a tablespoon in the whole thing right but it's sweet enough that they're not noticing some of the bitterness um wow. collards the, the winter is the best time to eat collards because collards are less bitter after a freeze oh i forgot this is like list <laughs> i'm getting so much information i love it and i love the greens my husband his family's from virginia and every time we go up there for the holidays i'm like do you have the greens do you have the greens do you have the greens they make the best greens and like we actually brought some frozen ones back home with us from our last trip up it was amazing 
because they get it like after the freeze maybe that's why they're so good it yeah it really changes it so like and that's the thing like think about what's the most bitter so that's one of the reasons why i don't talk a lot about mustard greens i feel like mustard greens are like a level 10 green are they delicious <laughs> yes but can everybody take them no no, they can't, and that's okay. <laughs> Kale is super neutral, I think, as far as that goes. It's not too bitter, but you do have to be careful about, like, I'm bad about going, well, there's two cups of this left. Let me just throw it in. So the first time I cooked kale and beans, it was disgusting. <laughs> I have those I have those stories. <laughs> right? We, we all do. But um, to get yeah. Cheryl to start eating greens, I made I called them Asian style greens, which was totally made up. So I'd squeeze like two oranges or clementines or whatever the heck I had that was sweet and citrusy in there. A tiny bit, like probably half a teaspoon of sesame oil, some soy sauce, you could use coconut aminos, but it was mm -hmm. different enough. And again, I, I think have having a little sweet, a little salty, just kind of opens that door and now she'll eat greens anywhere that's amazing it's like slow baby steps and it's amazing at how like at, when you look back over the years at how far she's come because i look back over the years and i see how far my husband has come and i'm like really really proud of him and i love because not everyone is doing this for their health but my husband it's nice that he wants to be healthy and like plant chicks with planted forward, we're attracting women or people who are wanting to get healthier. And the beauty of wanting to get healthier, it's never too early to start. Children are getting type one diabetes, like younger and younger and younger, or type two, excuse me, type two diabetes, younger and younger and younger. And at the same, on the opposite end of the spectrum, there's people in their 80s my mother is in her 70s it's not too late for her to start making some lifestyle choices to still get healthier so that's the beauty it's never too early and it's never too late to start taking care of yourself and that's one of the things like when we're flying when you're on the airplane they say put that oxygen mask on yourself first so that you can care for everyone around you and it's really important that we do start to honor our bodies our bodies are our temples and we need to start taking care of ourselves and one of the best ways to do that is looking at how many plants that you're getting in the next meal or the next snack maybe you just get you add one plant to your plate at the next meal because so many times people will have a bag of chips yeah potato chips it's a potato mm -hmm. or corn but it's fried and it's processed and when you do that you're re it's it's so inflammatory and that doesn't count. So like, can you add one whole plant, one like closest to its natural state plant to each meal and each snack? I like just, I challenge you to do that if you wanna start somewhere. Or maybe you just wanna start with one meal a day. Whatever you can do, try it and keep on trying. And keep coming back to Kathy's show because she's got some great tips. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love this and I, I love it because now is the time to add veggies. It's the easiest time of the year. Now, I'll say that now in the winter, I'll tell you how it's easy in the winter. But it's, you know, now we get a kind of variety. Like, because for me, there's nothing more comforting in the winter than like a nice baked sweet potato or regular potato with some chili over it. I mean, it's so easy to add in that yumminess. Because the thing is, is I, uh, the misconception is what I love to add in the summer is salads. And so the misconception is, oh, you're plant-based, here's a salad. And that's not to say there, there aren't lots of you eating giant, super filling, delicious, wonderful salads, but that's, they're thinking lettuce, cucumbers, and tomatoes. Which, mm -hmm. you know, I did have a salad of that the other night and it was delicious because they came off my plants and it was really <laughs> awesome. And for the first time in 57 years, I was like, oh, that's why they call it a garden salad. <gasps> I love that, Kathy. Wait, do you have a garden? I have a, a deck garden. So the, I haven't mm. had, a, I haven't grown anything in a number of years. So we've got, um, we went to Lidl. L-I-D-L, -L, and they had these great raised planters and these self-watering planters. So I have, 
I have a decent amount. So our deck is, is fairly large, so it's all around there. So I have maybe four, six tomato plants. I've got a bunch of, I've got all the pepper plants. I've got shishito, jalapeno, mild jalapeno, pimento, mm. all these things. But my love language, Kathy. <laughs> I know, I know. And it, it's super exciting, even though, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure this year it's cost way more, but the way I'm kind of offsetting that is Cheryl's mom gave me extra birthday money and that's the what I spent it on. So it was free. That is amazing. <laughs> and when was your birthday? In April. I'm a big old Taurus. A big Taurus. Happy belated birthday. My birthday's actually tomorrow. Oh, yay. yay. <laughs> so are you a cancer? Gemini. Gemini. Okay. I have a lot of friends Gemini. that are on both. Yes. So Gemini, and I'm just going to like diverge off of this plant-based talk for a second. So my evil twin would come out when I used to drink tequila. Thank goodness I'm sober 10 years. So that evil twin has not been out from the tequila monster for over 10 years. So I'm grateful for that. I just oh. celebrated 10 years of sobriety okay. in May, which is huge. I'm super, like, I feel like that's more exciting than my birthday that's happening tomorrow, which is crazy. Well, that's but so I, exciting. And I'm, I have so many friends that have gone through different programs and things like that. My father had mm -hmm. an issue and no bottom. So I more than regular people appreciate people who like work on themselves and get better. And I do, yes. I do um, imbibe occasionally. One of the things I've been doing lately, which is, um, using some of the zero alcohol alcohol yes. like liars yeah, like it's, yeah like the the liars is from australia so i just made this like i call it a kathy mai tai because it's not a proper mai tai anyhow when i make it with alcohol but they had i had of liars dark rum amaretto i used orange wow. juice lime juice something else and we made a slushy with it so it was not sugar free and it was not super healthy, it but good. it was, it was zero alcohol. Some of the things have like 0.01% or something. This has none, but it, these do have sugar in it. Usually it's cane sugar. Right. Um, yeah. But that's one thing I've just been kind of playing with because I'm kind of doing at least a mostly summer, sober summer kind of thing. Cause I think it's really oh, nice. I love summer. Yeah, and so, but, because I think it's kind of fun, because then we get to have, like, for me, I don't have to have alcohol. Now, mm -hmm. what I will do when we go out, I almost always get a cocktail, because I'm trying something that would cost me $200 to try at home if I had to get the seven bottles of liquor that's in there. So, right. like, I'm the person who likes to taste things and then come and recreate, and so doing it this way has been very fun. That is really cool. And I really respect normal people like you. My husband is one of you guys where he can have like part of a drink and not even finish it. Like that's just foreign to me. So honestly, if people can drink in moderation, I applaud you. It's just not my story. And it's, it's beautiful. And I think that it's nice to be able to have a mocktail or water i'm just a water girl i'm kind of boring with my drinks but you know it's it, one of the things that this plant or my sobriety i want to say my sobriety one of the things that my sobriety brought me back to is this plant forward way of living or a plant-based mm -hmm. diet and i just thought when i got sober that i was going I, I don't even know what i was thinking i was thinking maybe i was going to learn how to drink like a normal person or whatever but i literally got to know myself and what my interests were. And I've always been super passionate that our lifestyle is medicine. And now there's board certifications for physicians, physician extenders, nurses, dietitians, health coaches. Like this is a whole certification where you can change what's on the end of your fork or spoon or knife. And like the people you hang around, it's all like lifestyle is medicine. And it's, we can, we have, we can, we've got the power in us. So I hope I'm inspiring some of you to kind of look a little bit more at where you can start leveling up and maybe pay more attention and how you can honor your body in a healthier way, in a more mindful way. 
but whatever you do, love yourself, love yourself wherever you are, because you are amazing right here, right now. No, I love that. Love that. Because the thing is, is especially when you're trying to make changes and sometimes hard changes, at least with most women that I know, their knee jerk reaction is to beat up on themselves. So it's the, oh, I'm stupid. Oh, I should be able to do this. Oh, this shouldn't be this hard. You know, just all these things. And sometimes it's like, yeah, it's hard and I'm doing it. And look, I did it today and maybe I didn't do something else. But I think that it's neat too to think about more of this global way of like, because I love the way your sobriety played into you getting healthier in other ways as well. And just through my life, I mean, I've, I've been friends with so many people in AA and things like that because I'm like, and I would never have a party. I used to have a lot of parties. I would never have a party without a non-alcoholic special drink as well. So if I'm making butter beer with rum, there is a non-alcoholic butter beer as well. There is never, like, what did we do? We did, we used to do Harry Potter parties. So I'd have this big multi-course dinner party. And I did like um, a sparkling wine Earl Grey spritzer. Mm -hmm. So we had it with sparkling water. I mean, you make a syrup. It's not hard. People go, oh, how would I, same thing as like, oh, she's vegan. What can I possibly make? Um, You know, (laughs) I'm not that picky. Go get me a veggie burger if you got to and give me a salad. We can work with this. You know, even pasta and marinara sauce works. I don't don't need you (laughs) to make me a 10 course dinner. Now, if you're coming to my house and there's stuff you haven't had in a long time, I'm going to do my best to do that. But I don't expect that in return. But I think it's just a matter of, again, and and Gina was saying sugar is my alcohol. I have to stay away. And I I definitely can say, yes, sugar, I get very addicted to it. And the past couple of years got me way more on sugar. So that is also one of the reasons why I'm doing all this Ninja Creamy stuff, too, is so I can have what I want the way I want mm-hmm. it and the way that it's better for me. Cause we got into so delicious ice cream bars, which is bad for oh. like 80,000 reasons. Right. And expensive. Right. That's the same, like yes. you go sober, mm-hmm. you quit having ice cream bars and you start having a lot of money all of a sudden. It's true, <laughs> it's so true. And I, like literally we're gonna have to do like five more live because I can go on so many different tangents here. But one of the things, I just recently did the Zoe Gut Health Report to see what my gut microbiome is. But they don't, they look at your gut microbiome, you have to do a poop sample. And then I did the study, so I had a blood, a continuous glucose monitor on my arm for two weeks. And I had to do these challenges and eat these muffins. And it looked to see how my blood sugars responded. And then I also had to do a finger prick where they looked to see what my blood fat responses were. And I just did a live on this. It's on our Plant Chicks YouTube channel. I honestly, because I, like I said before, I've got so much heart disease in my family. I thought that my lipid levels were not going to be good. And I thought my blood sugar control would be pretty good. And my gut health, I'm like, I've been plant-based for a long time. I do a lot of things right. Mm -hmm. No girls. My (laughs) microbiome has a lot of room for growth. My blood sugar levels, I'm... I get a lot of inflammation when I eat sugar. And then my blood fat control was much better. I was like, wow, this is so not what I was expecting. So literally after I got my Zoe report, I'm starting a no sugar or low sugar. And David Sinclair, he's now eating more plant-based, but he's one of the leading researchers on health and longevity. And that's one of my passions right now is longevity. But one of the things that he says is like, I. Like if he's at a dinner and someone has dessert, he'll take a bite of it, but he's not going to order his own dessert. I'm like, that's something that I can get behind. So I'm not saying I'm never having sugar again, but I'm literally redoing, reworking some menus that I've had. And like that recipe with the bananas and dates and the nut butter and the uh, cacao powder and the soft tofu, I'm going to redo that one because bananas and dates shoot up my blood sugars. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can eat them still, but I need to have them with some nuts or something like that. But I need to reevaluate that recipe and tweak it 
so it's better for my gut health. It's been really, really, really eye-opening. And Zoe's not for everyone, but if this sounds like it's something that is of interest to you and you want to like dive deep into it and see how you can really personalize your nutrition, I do recommend that you check out Zoe and you can use our code PLANTCHICKS, P-L-A-N-T-C-H-I-C-S, for 10% off. I'm really, I'm, I love it. You can also schedule like a 15 minute call with me if you want to talk more about that, but it's just super, super fascinating. No, that sounds awesome. And CJ says, are the Zoe muffins vegan? The muffin that you had to eat during the Zoe? No, those are not. And that's a thing that you have, like they say, there's something in them. It might have an egg white, but I'm like, okay, for science, I'm just going to do it. And it's two muffins. I think it's two days that you have to do it. I can't remember, but I, and it's not vegan and it's, I don't think it's gluten free. I can't remember, but there's two different things that I remember. They should I'm have like, a okay. recipe option. They should talk to me and let me tell me what their things are, and I will make a recipe option for them. They really should. I I know the chief medical director, so I'm going to have to uh, <laughs> maybe I'll throw the, throw your name to him because that would be good if they could get a vegan. Because it seems option. like well, if it's just an egg white too, and I mean. Obviously, I'm not seeing any of this. I'm just making this up. It seems like they could just use some aquafaba because that would give it probably the same amount of protein and the same amount of whatever because an egg white isn't giving you it anyhow. Less mad scientist than you now. see that you're not a food scientist. This room takes me back, and then I'll let you go because I know that we're running out of time. But I remember in college when I'm studying nutrition, we had to do – it was food – Food science was the name of the class. And I had to make different breads and I had them with gluten and without gluten. And I had to make gluten balls and I had to photocopy. You like the photocopy machine when you like make papers. I had to take the bread and like the holes, the size of the holes in the bread, depending on the gluten, I had to do make video copies of them. And with these gluten balls, it was the craziest thing. But now, I love the whole food science thing. I want to get more, I want to get back into it. So I love what you're doing, Kathy. Keep doing it. Well, that sounds awesome. And it's been such a pleasure to have you on. And I do, you definitely have to come back. Hopefully you will. I haven't scared you off or anything. Um, it's, it's just like a really nice, cozy environment. And I, I love how we're starting with ourselves. We're really supporting ourselves the best we can. And that's, that's the best place to start. My thing with it being summer is add a fruit in your breakfast. Yes. Maybe have a side salad once a day. We're not asking, you know, if you want to do more than that, absolutely. But if you did nothing other than that and that changed your whole life, it's not that hard to start. And if you're having a real trouble making food, remember there may be a food service because it's kind of like, Usually it's money, time, and effort. And so usually we have lots of money and we don't have any time. And so mm -hmm. there are whole food plant-based meal services you can get to. So just realize wherever you are on that spectrum, there is a solution. And CJ says, thank you so much. This has been great. And it has, it's been so awesome to have you on. And thank you so much. And everybody, I'm just gonna tell you the same thing I always do, which is, if you've got a little bit of extra energy today, maybe a tablespoon, be nice to yourself. Do something special. Take a walk, take a bath, have a tea, something. Got a little bit extra, do something nice for something else living. An animal counts if you're hating on people right now. Or just be nice to your cashier. It's easy. Okay? Have an mm -hmm. amazing rest of your week, and I will see you guys very, very soon. Thank you, Kathy.